Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is life coach and LOA teacher, Joel Elston. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And Joel, today's topic is letting go, which is a topic that I think was probably a major part of our first interview 12 years ago. Because I, I was thinking back to, because you were, you were episode number 12. And I, on that 12th episode, I remember I was still very much in the range of trying to understand how the law of attraction worked. Sure. And you, I brought you on as an expert. Uh, and in the course of that conversation, letting go became a part of the main theme we were addressing that day. So here we are 12 years later talking about exactly the same thing. That's awesome. And I really find it impressive. You considered me an expert 12 years ago because I didn't know anything about it too much. So uh, thank you. Uh, well, well, <laughs> it, it actually shows just how little I did know that I thought you were an expert. Exactly. So that's good. So it, it really, we, we both do about the same amount, to be honest with you. I would so, say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We kind of but, discovered it together over time, really. We did. We, we really hold it in. But uh, yeah, the letting go is, 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 is one of my favorite topics. Forgiveness, letting go. Uh, uh, whatever term you want to use there, uh, th there's, it can get, I'm not being controversial here, but there's a point beyond forgiveness or letting go where you just don't care. And that, that's, uh, uh, there, there's, that sounds so negative when you say that, but when, when you really get to the point that things can't affect you. So I, I often see people post something online. Like one of my friends did this the other day said, I really appreciate the people that stand up for me in a room when I'm not there. Hmm. And my comment was get to a place that you don't care what anybody's saying in the room anyway, and you're in a better place. So it, and he goes, I'm not there yet. I said, well, but you, when you can really get there, like people that have attempted to harm me or have harmed me or, or cheat me or whatever those things are, you, that there's no impact anymore. There's no one I harbor a resentment toward. I have, I guess the term forgiveness of, any, of anybody that's ever wronged me, but I, it's beyond forgiveness. I just, they don't mm -hmm. occupy anything. So I, it's not an active thing where nobody can harm me unless I allow them to harm me. And, and, and obviously I don't mean physically, but, uh, but just attempting to, you know, say things that if, if somebody says something negative about me, I'm, you know, me, I'm like, thank you. I, I, <laughs> I th there's nothing that can be said about me that, that upsets me. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, you know, it, I hear all the time, you know, you're crazy. And I'm like, oh, yes, of course. I mean, <laughs> clearly. That's what we love about you. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody's ever suggested I wasn't. I don't know where you thought I wasn't, you know. So, uh, but also just not being triggered by it because mm -hmm. the letting go or forgiving or whatever that term we want to call this for the episode is not really about the other person. It's about your vibration. Yeah. And so when, when you can dismiss people that have harmed you and dismiss the, the effect of that, that's the most operational part of the law of attraction that we're trying to, uh, you know, do here is, is use that. I don't want, I don't want that energy. So I'm not forgiving them for them. I'm just moving on mm. and, it, it doesn't affect me. And th there's almost stages of that. And I've, I've done you know, a, a, a few workshops, you know, because there so many people get stuck on forgiveness. And in my mind, there's just another page after forgiveness as well. Um, I don't know if you agree with that or not. Oh, I, well, I'll even go a step further. Not only do I agree with it, I actually aim for something that the first time this idea was presented to me, I thought it was impossible. Now I'd no longer think it's impossible. In fact, I think it's desirable and reachable. But I don't just aim for forgiveness. Now I aim for appreciation and 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 understanding of the perspective mm -hmm. of the person who I didn't like, who was trying to harm me or something like that. Sure. Yeah. That, because that, I mean, that, that's actually more powerful from my perspective. I and mean, forgive forgiveness. Actually, that's the easy step. Yeah. And, I really and, think. Well, and, and you know, years ago when uh, we were talking about the timing of when we we met, um, it was you know, like I said, 12 years ago, it wasn't too long after that, uh, you know, the company that I was working for, I left right. and s left slash fire. Uh, and the, the person that was the conduit of me leaving the person that sort of set me up, the one that really orchestrated my departure, uh, was my, my assistant. And, and so I felt at the time horribly betrayed, 
Uh, it really bothered me that she did that. And it was something that, that really haunted me for a while. Mm -hmm. And in retrospect, if she wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have the life I have today. Right. I really believe that she did me the biggest favor of anybody in the last 10 years. You no, know, it's been 13 uh, in at least the last 15 years of my life. I think mm -hmm. this is the greatest gift she gave me. Now there was no intent to be kind in her attempt to do that no. uh, at all. For whatever reason, she just wanted me out of there and, and sort of she wrestled control away, which she did, but I wouldn't go back for 10 times the money he was paying me before. Uh, and, and, and I, and I'm not angry with her. I actually sent her an email a few years after that. Now, of course I got no response. I said, I know it wasn't your intent to help me, but it was certainly. <laughs> the, you really sent that email. I love yeah, that. I really did. Yeah, I did. I said, I want to thank you. It wasn't your intent uh, to help me, but nobody <laughs> has done anything more important than what you did when you uh, basically set me up to be fired. And I, I, I am thanking you. Not because again, because you tried to, but I, I just need you to know that that was life changing, and you gave me the life that I never dreamed was possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, I got no reply. Wait, wait, uh, but, but you got two great things out of that. First of all, you found your way to the appreciation level, and second of all, you kind of backhanded her in a very nice way. <laughs> but, but yeah, but it, it but uh, she didn't <laughs> occupy. I did, and I it but. It, it was, it was, there was no intent to, it, I was very sincere and you really were great. And it, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And so your, your, I mean, I'm trying to, to imagine what, what it was like from her perspective, receiving yeah. that email. I oh mean, yeah. When, yeah. When, when she got that email, how did she react to that? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I'm sure she just probably just said, just roll her eyes or whatever. And, uh, but she never responded. I, I, I and, and but she doesn't occupy any space now that doesn't mean that i want to go have dinner with her or hang no. out with her um it's just she's not somebody i'd ever want to spend any time with but nonetheless she was just a pawn not i want to use the term she was a pawn she was a, a person in my life that was there to push me along because i wasn't going to make the leap to my private practice on mm -hmm. my own i was not going to mm -hmm. do that uh, I wasn't quite confident enough to do that. So she pushed me to make the leap. I'm not saying I wouldn't have ever done it, but she pushed me a couple of years ahead of where I was ready. Yeah, sure. Um, exactly. And so I, when I did, and then, you know, the story behind that, I, I mean, I started, you know, a, a couple of weeks after I left there. And within a few weeks after that, I was full. I never looked back. I just, I was, you know, practice was full, has been thriving. And I, it, it unfolded a chapter of my life. And that's where the law of attraction just, you know, I, I really believe that my, I didn't want to be there. I loved, I loved my staff that I worked with, uh, my therapist that I worked with. I love my clients, but the environment was very negative. The owner mm. was a, ra a very rage-filled person. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> obviously there's a lot of politics that I didn't even really know about behind the scenes and uh, mm. uh, at the time. And, and this was also somebody I'm very... Uh, I don't trust people completely very easily. And she was somebody that I trusted completely. So it mm. was a, a total betrayal, but I often say she gave me the gift of betrayal, the gift of betrayal that uh, allowed me the life I have today. And, I, and, and there, there is no tongue in cheek in that statement. It is very sincere that I, she is one of the things, her actions are something that, that really gave great advancement to my life. And I mean that. And well, Taking it a step further, though, what, what you, I think you're also saying is that you, you're you genuinely expressing that while this is not somebody you want to hang out with, this is somebody who actually did you a big favor. And big you favor. Feel like, big you favor. feel like it was a really, really big favor. Yeah. And and because I didn't have, I wasn't at a place because I, I mean, I, there were days I'd leave going, I got to get out of here. I just got to <laughs> get out of here. And and I wasn't going to do it because I I had loyalty to my staff and I knew mm -hmm. that things would go crazy if I left and it did. Mm -hmm. uh and you know and all that stuff but it you know me and the owner the, you know, of the company we're fine now we're friends you know we don't again we don't hang out together much but we talk occasionally haven't spoken you know that happened i haven't spoken to this uh lady that, since that day that happened other than my email the only communication i had uh but that i'm just using that as an example that's a, you, you i'm way beyond forgiving her and sort of supporting your concept i'm mm -hmm. grateful for the act i'm grateful regardless of her intent that I don't know anybody that's helped me more than she has, as I said, in the last 15 years. And, and I can actually say just from my own experiences of doing exactly what you're talking about, 
once you learn to do it the first time, once okay. you learn to find a situation where there's somebody who wronged you or somebody who treated you badly or something like that, and you can actually think about them in an appreciative way, it's an amazing feeling. Oh, yeah. I well, mean, they, it, it just, they, they, it's an unmatched feel. I can't match it up to anything else in, in my experience. It, it's very different from anything else I've ever experienced. Well, you, you, you take away that, you know, so many people get occupied. I'll never be able to forgive that person. I'll never mm -hmm. be able to let that go. And when you realize that other person that you can't forgive or let go of what happened, they're not being affected by that. You're, you are. Right. And, and, there's the, the, and as we know, the law of attraction responds to the frequency and the vibration of what we're feeling. So if this, this hate slash anger or whatever term you want to use or this, this bad feeling is existing because of, you know, the law of attraction, it, again, it doesn't identify where it's coming from. It just says, hey, we're going to give you more whatever this craziness you're thinking is. And so that's what you get. And that's why people get stuck in, you know, letting go. And, you know, like my, one of the things that, you know, in my childhood, I had uh, my alcoholic grandfather who was very abusive and loud and all that mm -hmm. when I was a kid. And my biological father, who was a compulsive gambler, well, he's never abusive. Uh, he took all the funds of our house and we, you know, it was just, we ended up having to live with my alcoholic grandfather. Now, both of those people are people that I understand since I know addiction so well, they, I, I have changed that narrative. I, if it weren't for the experience I had as a child, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. They mm. were not good experiences. I'm not trying to say they were good experiences, no, no. but, but they have, I, I, I harbor no resentment to either of them because they both had their own issues I, I now understand. I know why they both were addicted. They both had individual stories that were horrific. And so I, I you know, I, I forgave them at some point, And now I'm just, I've gone beyond the next page. I'm grateful for the experiences that they brought to the table for me. Not that they were great experiences, but I'm not the man I am today without what I've been through. And I really mm -hmm. look at it that way. I, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not pro child abuse as, if, as some people, might, I'm not saying that I am. I'm just simply saying events happened. I responded to it. I had a chain of my own events happened. That also made me more forgiving of them because I had an addictive period of my life. But right now I see all of this as a perfectly orchestrated thing leading to my yeah. life right now. And so yeah. there, there's not a person alive. There's not a person anywhere live or dead that, I harbor resentment or bad feelings toward I, 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 anymore at all. That's really an accomplishment. It's a it, tremendous it, accomplishment. And, and, and it, it, it yeah. reminds me of something too. It reminds me of, of those early conversations that we had here on the podcast. I mean, I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but that first episode, I do remember letting go became part of the conversation, but I don't remember at, at which point during our, our conversational journey that I brought up the idea. Well, if I'm supposed to let go, what am I letting go of? I, I remember I used the analogy of a steering wheel on a car. You know, I'm supposed to let go of the steering wheel, but I don't even know where the steering wheel is. How yeah. am I supposed to let go of something when I don't even know what it is I'm letting go of? Well, yeah, the, the letting go has a visual to it that you're releasing. And that's, you know, like letting yeah. go of the steering wheel or something. But more than anything, it's sort of the art of allowing. You know, when, when Abraham Hicks talks about allowing, mm -hmm. uh, there's a difference between accepting something and just simply allowing, just allowing life to happen. And there's a, this is sort of a parallel to that. Just letting go is just what has happened has happened. And it, 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 your attention to it does nothing to change it, but it can affect your vibration right now. So people that have been through traumatic stuff or people that have been, you know, let, you know, I got, you got to let it go. You'll hear that a lot. But in, in the process of letting go, you're still focused on the thing. You know, and, and that's that's keeps you sort of meshed with that. But being able to to almost just allow everybody to be everybody, allow every event that ever happened to happen and and sit and, and get to a place where the, of non judgment. And, and it, now that's not an easy place. And I don't anyway, you know, I, I would love practice. to. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to tell you that I don't ever get upset. I don't yell at the cars in front of me. I would love <laughs> to tell you that. But Walt, I will not. No. Like you. <laughs> yeah. No. So, occasionally <laughs> i'll but i don't stick with it anymore that's so, the keyword stick yeah, yes you by 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 I, if something if there's that emotion that hits with me 
then I can immediately for a second, I, I'm human. I can't, I, I can't control it fast enough not to feel it, right. but I can quickly dismiss it, let it go. It's not going to affect my day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It. And, and I remember those early conversations where I came to the realization of, of what you said early on in that little bit there, where you talked about how letting go is really nothing more than not paying attention to it anymore. Yes. yes. That, that was, that was my, for me, that was the first breakthrough when I finally realized it, it's, it's just about redirecting my attention to something else, anything else. That's the, that's like the first primary step of letting go yes. of something. Cause until you like, until you turn your attention away, you can't let go. Well, the, the, the way the, the way the brain focuses, especially when, when you overthink something or the harm or an end of a relationship, everybody has the, most people that have a relationship that ends have, have a similar way of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. They will, you know, they, the first year, the one that didn't want the relationship to end starts a mental negotiation. Then they replay conversations over and over. Re, just, you know, trying to pick, get nuance. What did she mean? What did he or she mean by that? Right, or right. was there a clue? Or, right. and, you know, I, I know you went through a horrible, painful breakup. Oh, we yeah, it was not fun. Yeah. And, 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 and I asked and, all those same questions. Yeah, and, 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 we, and we answered those questions. We talked about it. And I, and I told you, we're not going to know the answer, but it's good to, to it's okay to ask them. But understand, mm -hmm. you're never going to get the answer. I'm not saying never, but you're not going to get it that day. You know, that's advice, by the way, that you gave me. I love that advice. I, to this yeah. day, I love it. Yeah, thank you. It, it, and it's so relevant. But it, when you when you realize your attention is, you are what you pay attention to, because that's the, what is trying. So when you're looking at the deficit of whatever that is, the lack, the deficit, then your attention is on the deficit. So you're feeling the lack. When you're looking at the other the, you know, hopefully the abundance or at least something more neutral than the lack, then your attention is there and that's your vibration. So it's really hard and it, it, it's not something that happens instantly and you have to get really good at it over time, but this is a practice behavior, but it just doesn't, I don't harbor anything anymore. There's nothing. And, and, you know, when, when I think about when somebody said, Joy, there's nobody you hate at all. And I go, there's really nobody I, I can't think of anybody I hate. I don't, I, I mean, I don't even hate baseball players. I hate the sport maybe, but I don't hate the baseball players. You know, it's not their fault. So, uh, you know, it, but it's, it, I don't, but there, there is no hate here or there is no, I don't harm anything. It's just, and so if, if, if there's no, nobody can verbally upset me anymore. Uh, my son can try sometimes and I can bite a little bit. Um, well, well, he lives with you, so he knows what the buttons are. He so. knows where the buttons are. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's, 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 I mean, you know, when he turned 18 and was given all the knowledge in the universe and became an expert in everything, I thought I'd be helpful, but it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's not remotely helpful. <laughs> Many parents you. have come to the same conclusion. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I was thinking that would be like having a built in Google, but his information. Yeah. <laughs> His information is not quality information. That he knows, so. <laughs> uh, but but all kidding aside, I, 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 this is such a big topic because being stuck, mm -hmm. letting go, the opposite of letting go to me is being stuck in something. Yes. And, and when you're stuck in something, it occupies so much brain energy. Your, your, oh, yeah. your, your brain burns a large, a, a much a disproportionate amount of calories in your body. Your brain, it's a very high number. And I wish I remembered the percentage, but it's something like 25% of your calories burnt, are burnt by the brain, wow. uh, which is for the size of the, I mean, that's really, think about all the other functions of the body. It takes up a lot of calories. Yeah. And so within that, when you start just being stuck in those thought, endless loops of, <clears> of <throat> whatever the frustration or the loss of betrayal you know, the, the answer is to redirect. And the, the concept of forgiveness is not, and I'm, I'm saying this in a little different way than I said earlier, the concept of forgiveness seems to be that, wow, you're, you're very kind to that person, you're forgiving them. I mean, I have, I'll be honest with you, that isn't why I forgave people. Now, right. it might have been kind, but my intention was very selfish to forgive them. Mm -hmm. My intention was to get them out of my space, out of my brain. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and if it helped them, you know, and, and I have, 
let go of a lot of things. And yeah, I can't, I can't deal with that anymore. You know, I've had people that have attempted to harm me or just, you know, say things. And I, I, I'm like, why am I going to empower that? So when somebody says, Hey, Joel, do you know what somebody said about you? And I'd be like, I don't sincerely promise you. I don't care. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and I, and I, and I think you know me well enough that it doesn't matter. Oh yeah. If it actually did matter, I think I'd probably go into a dead faint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and it should, but that, that hasn't always been the case. I, I used to be very worried about what people thought. I mm. used to be very worried about that. And, and, and right now I'm just getting to, I, I can let go of, you know, uh, uh, anything I can let go of now. It's just, you know, the, the, it, because it's so freeing and knowing once I really got a handle on the law of attraction, the vibrational energy that I'm feeling being the key to all of this, I can't have anything disrupting that. So I've all, I, I say this frequently on a show before I leave the house, I adjust my mindset every morning. I make sure I'm right. I'm, I'm feeling right, the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, not <clears throat> for no other reason than that vibrational energy that I walk out the door with can carry me through the day or can create a difficult day for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I, I think it's also really interesting that uh, by focusing the way you focus by, by uh, keeping it onto this, this belief system that you can forgive, that you can let go and that once you've let go, it's behind you and it's done. When, when you're, when you haven't experienced it, that, can seem daunting at the least and overwhelming. But once you've been through it and experienced it and maybe even experienced it a few times, you, you tell me, this is the way I perceive it. I think it's actually fun. I've never really thought about it. I'm sure it is if I think about it, but you're right. I, 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 I when I say, you know, I think you sort of see how my brain works too. When I let go, it's not, it's, it's let go. It's gone. It's just, mm. You know, so I, I, I'm maybe not perceiving it as fun. I will admit when I wrote the, the email to the lady who did all that, that was a fun email. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, there's yeah. a good example it, of it. it yeah, right. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think about it in terms of, I, you know, what are some of the things that uh, divide society? Like, I, you, you know, I have this little bit of a, of a, a dark side of me. I like to look at what's going on with the political situation. Yeah. And literally the way I look at the political situation is exactly in this manner. It's in the manner of, I look at, you know, a, a leading figure in it, and I'll say to myself, really? I, I, like, I'm laughing inside as I'm, I'm looking at this. I'll say, oh, yeah. is, is this like a comic strip? <laughs> is this, I mean, is this a real human being? It's, it's just, it's hard to believe this is an actual human being we're talking about here. Yeah. That, that, that's that's the kind of kind of cracked humor that, that I engage in when I think about this stuff. Of course. I mean, a lot of our political figures have become cartoonish. And, and they have. Playing, they really have. And it, it's something that, it, 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 it's fascinating. I don't watch it because of the, the way it's presented. You know, they're, they're trying to, you know, create everything's falling apart and all that. I, oh, yeah. I, I, just, I don't have yeah. any time for that. Yeah. yeah I, just, I just stay out of all of that because it's, you know, the, the, and it infuriates one side or the other whenever I say this, but whoever's going to be the, the next president, I, I have a strong prediction that I will thrive. I will, I will come out on top. I'll be better off than I was the four years as I have been for every president since mm. I turned my life around. So because you know, it had nothing it, to do with the president. It never had anything mm. to do with the president. That, mm. that was, that's the, the belief system that, yeah, that's what goes on. And either one side or the other is going to, there's going to be financial gain for me on one side or the other. I just, I, and I'll find it is no problem. It, I'll be fine. And and, and and that's lived to the, that's how I live my life. I believe that. So I let go of all that process or feeling like a victim of anything. Uh, it's like, okay, well, you, you know, and I, and I, and it infuriates people because I, I don't signal my uh, political leanings often. I just, you know, I'm just simply like, I don't care. It doesn't, it's all silly. It's all silly. Well, it is it truly is, but that's also what makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I do have a crack sense of humor. I really yeah. do. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm the first one to admit it. Uh, and and I, I enjoy watching people just crack up. <laughs> just, well, just... well I, I mean, the political memes that I see on Instagram and stuff, it, now that's those are funny because they'll just take the most absurd statement that either side says, and you're just going, it, it, it would seem like, boy, they made that up. No, they didn't make that up. He, they literally said at, at and, and once one of these memes, this is something, and again, we this is not a leaning to either side for me, but 
in a very intense, our last debate that we have between, you know, President Trump and President Biden, they literally had a five minute discussion on their golf game. <laughs> they literally, these are two <laughs> grown men. They have both been the most powerful men, man in uh, the world, the leader of the strongest nation yeah. in the world. And they're in a pissing contest of who can hit the <laughs> golf ball for them. I was expecting them to pull out their penises and measure them. <laughs> you see what I mean when I say this stuff is fun? This stuff is just fun. <laughs> so, it, it, but it's so absurd. You're, it you're, is. You're, you know, what's your stance on the war in Israel? My golf game is better than yours, <laughs> yeah. and I can outdrive you. And, and, and you know, you're going, really? And you think one side would go, okay, well, let me not engage with this. The other one then starts arguing. I can outdrive you. It's like, wow. And so you see that and you realize, huh, it, it, it's it's not serious stuff. It's, it's not. It, it, it's right out of the old musical Annie Oakley. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can exactly. do anything better than you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's, it's laughable that that's our political situation. But, but again, you can, if, if you don't look at it through that eye and you, you really start buying it, it can really affect you. If you really believe yeah. the world's falling apart, our country's falling apart, it is. It's not falling apart for me, but it can be falling apart for people that that really believe it's falling apart. Your situation. And that's the letting go apart. part. That's the part that you absolutely. need to let go of. Yes, absolutely. And, and there's a really easy way to evaluate what the part is that you need to let go of. It, it confused me for the longest time, but I finally realized that there's a very, very, very simple rule, and that simple rule is this: when I think about whatever that X is, whatever that that behavior is, or or the argument that's being made, or the political uh, speech that's being made or the platform or whatever, whenever I think about whatever that is, how do I feel? If I don't feel good about it, I know that's something that I need to let go of. Absolutely. Let go of the stuff that you don't feel good about. Let go of the stuff that's not attracting your energy the that's appropriate right. way. That Let go of that. If one, one of the, as without all my need for the disclaimers, uh, you know, I, I am an advocate for the use of psilocybin in therapeutic settings. And I have had- You've uh, heard that a few times, just, yes, just commenting. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, I just comment. And uh, I also have had a few experiences with a therapist on mm -hmm. you know, how to use it. And one of the things I was fascinated about is when you're undergoing one of these experiences, you will have what I consider revelations or you'll hear something or mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll have a thought and, and they're usually pretty profound. Sometimes they're not, but sometimes they're really <laughs> profound. Sometimes they're just weird, weird. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them, it, it, it's like when I, the, there's a couple of messages that I have consistently gotten when I'm in this process. Nothing matters. Mm -hmm. It's nothing, not in a negative, in a very healthy way. All, all the stuff you worry about, you're not even here <clears throat> really in comparison your energy in these shells and you're fine all this is an experience you're going to be fine don't waste your time here worrying about minutia uh, that's uh, it, it was not delivered that way but it was that that's the concept and it's like it is all minutia it's just you, you're here to manifest you're here to vibrate you're here to to vibrate the energy and attract you know, i i that's my belief system at least that that's why you're here you 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 have chosen to be here during this exact time to experience these events is my belief system okay that's fair enough yeah and, and i love the fact that you use the phrase nothing matters um i mean not so much for the nothing part but for the matters part i, yeah. I love that part especially because I think it's also one of the best ways to remember why it is we want to let go of things. Yes. Because any time that we focus on something, we're turning it into matter. That's what we mean when we say it matters. We're fill in the blank, it matters. Yes. Um, and so literally, we need to be paying attention. If we really want certain things to matter and other things not to matter, meaning that we really want them to turn into physical reality versus not turning into physical reality, we got to pay attention to what matters, to Absolutely. what really matters. What well, really matters, and the the idea for me when I when I realize whatever I'm worried about today, which by the way is nothing, but if, if I were <laughs> worried about something, 
and this helped for all because I, I had a lot I dealt with a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry over the years I, I have graduated past all that but I, I, I had a revelation one time all this stuff that I'm worrying about is you know 99.9% of it never happened mm. and when the stuff I did worry about did happen I handled it like I've always handled it yeah and, and it, it worked out fine everything worked out fine so whatever here's a here's a test if you can go back what was your biggest concern three years ago this day? Three years ago this day. So yeah. let's see. that would be uh, July. Today's the 22nd. So July 22nd, 2021. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. We were toward the last part of, of the pandemic. So that was probably somewhere in the background. I have no idea. I can't even begin to tell you. But I promise what you were worried about then seemed like it was a big deal. I'm sure it did. But it doesn't, you don't even remember it. Nope. A and that that's the thing. It's it's this idea that, oh, this is so terrible. And you know, and and you know, if people lost people during the pandemic, I'm not minimalizing the pandemic. I, I'm not trying to say that, but I am saying that that we we think that all these events are, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they they, they end up they just never happen. So let, being able to let go of them. When, when you're 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 so worried and not not it's just it's going to work out we we have a magical way of things working out I always tell people you're all of us we have a 100 percent success rate in dealing with things we didn't believe we could deal with 100 mm. percent you're here sure. you survived it now some of my shit you know like some of my stuff was not pretty. Yeah. It was I think not you're right pretty. the first time, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> pretty, but it 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 everything I, I handled it and we're fine. You know what I'm saying? It's just uh, so the idea that somehow, oh no, this everything's falling apart, it, in my darkest day, and I've had some very dark days. Very. I didn't think I'd survive, and not only did I end up surviving, I ended up thriving. Mm. And and that that's something that I, I yeah, I, I didn't even know that was possible. And now that I know it's possible, in fact, now it's just cruise control. There, there's actually a, a really useful clue in there, too. You ended up thriving and you didn't know it was possible. Yes. That, that, that's reassuring, really, because yes. for somebody who's in a, a low vibrational state, a, a low amped up state, that is of common experience. I, I don't know how anything could turn into thrive here. I don't know how this could actually turn out well. How nice to know it actually can. And, and that's what happens is when you, when things happen and you, 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 you just keep thinking everything's terrible. Uh, and and I, somewhere along the way, I had an epiphany of this and mm -hmm. many years early in my recovery, it's like, okay, you know, I was, I was worried. I was always scared to death of going to jail, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it was, you know, that, cause I knew a lot of the stuff I was doing in my addictive behavior was, right. you know, going to is illegal. And I'd probably end up going to jail. So my biggest fear is going to jail. So I went to jail and other than being exceptionally boring, mm. it was absolutely not near. It, in fact, it was a relief. I think I've told you before. You have, yeah. That, that one of the most freeing moments of my life is I worried for a couple of years. I knew jail was inevitable. The, that was the event. Mm. And they arrested me. They took me to Hillsborough County Jail in Tampa. When they finally got me processed and I got back to my room, they shut the cell door. You would think, oh, my God, it would be a hard... I was like, oh, thank God, this is over. <laughs> Truly. Yeah, I believe you. And it and was, it, it, it's one of those things when you first hear the story, it seems incredible until you think about it for a moment. Yeah. And then you realize, well, yeah, how often do I, we, we, we coined a term for this, awfulize. How often do I awfulize stuff in ways that make it far worse than whatever the actual thing is? Yeah, and, and you know, uh, jail was not fun. It was very boring. It was not dangerous. I felt very safe. I sat there for roughly 30 days and listened to the most ridiculous conversations. I read every book and we watched PBS. Do you remember the show where in the world's Carmen San Diego? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I watched that every day. Yeah. That, that'll, that's punishment. <laughs> that is, I don't even like that Carmen anymore. I screwed her. I don't care where she is. Uh. <laughs> but, but it was, it was, that was all there was there. I mean, it was, it, you know, so it was boring. The food was terrible, but I was okay. I got out. I began the process. So the relief, the, 
the worry, the fear, my biggest fear of all that, the day it happened, I was relieved that it happened. And when I was relieved, Walt, I had no idea, am I going to be in jail for 10 years? Am I mm -hmm. going to be in jail for five years? Am I going to be in jail for 30 days? I just was relieved that I could quit worrying about it. I, I have finally ex ended up worst case scenario. Turns out the worst case scenario was not near as bad as I had imagined it. So I guess the real question becomes, since we hear that story, and I'm sure listeners are hearing that story, and since we probably believe it, I certainly believe it, that it's true, we can probably also come to the conclusion that there are times in our own lives where we've had similar experiences. So I guess the question becomes, well, if we know that's true on some level, we believe it's true on some level, how can we connect to it on demand? That's, I think, getting to the place where you can is sort of the goal. Mm. Does that make sense? You, yeah. any, any of these things that we're talking about, any of these uh, being able to let go on demand, being able to move on on demand, be able to, to see things in real time that this is going to work out for the best is a really hard thing to do. There, I think the, for me, the answer is partly you just trying to do it over and over again. Yes, you do it enough. And when you get enough evidence that everything is going to work out, you quit worrying about every little detail. You quit worrying about what's, yeah. what am I going to do about this? How In fact, you start turning the details around. You start creating details the other way. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the one thing that had helped me, we, I mentioned when I left Williamsville Wellness, you know, when I left work, you know, I left work on that Friday with a job and I, I never stepped, I've never been back to that building. I, I, any of my stuff that was there, I just said, throw it away. I didn't want to go back. Uh, I never looked back, never been back. And I didn't know what was going to happen, but, but I was in, far enough along with my law of attraction. Or I had no doubt it was going to work out. Mm -hmm. I just hadn't got to the point of understanding how, right. but it, there was no doubt. Which was it was probably good, out. by the way. I yes. mean, that, 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 from what we now know, that was probably the best thing that could happen is that you didn't know how and you weren't even trying to figure out how. I, I just, in fact, the, the timing of it uh, was perfect because the week after I was uh, fired, I ended up going, I had a plane reservation to go down to Florida mm. and spend time on my, my bench, you know, where I'm at, that where my, all my thinking's done down on Anna right. Maria Island. And I, I mean, I didn't have to make a plane reservation. It was already, it was already preset. I was ready to go. I was preset. That's and, wild. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, that's a thing that I don't even think I even realized how the timing of that, that was already in place. And I just went down there, had a great time. Uh, sat on the bench, got a call from uh, Dr. Master, who was my mentor at the time. He's, he said, I got an office in my building and I want you to come in there and start your practice. And I, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Life coaching, <laughs> is that a thing? I don't even know what that means. And, uh, and you know, it just, it, I didn't do anything really. It just, it just fell into place. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It, yeah. it, in fact, I remember the first time you told me that story. Not only did I think of it as being amazing, I thought of it as pseudo impossible. Yes. Cause yes. that from where I was sitting, that was impossible. Yeah. It, it, uh, yeah the, and, the only reason that the only reason I actually ended up buying it is because I believe you. Yeah. If, yeah. if it wasn't for the fact that you have in my mind, tremendous credibility, I would have said, yeah, right. Well, Pull uh, the it, other leg while you're at it. Yeah. I, but that's why, I mean, I, it, it, I've, I've actually told people, I don't, if, if, if this didn't happen to me, it doesn't seem plausible. It doesn't, it doesn't seem, seem no, it really doesn't. It just worked out like really. I mean, and and I'm if, not if saying, it were a lie, if if you were telling a lie, it would be such a poorly framed lie that no yeah. one can believe it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that uh, that's the thing. It's such a ridiculous lie. Yeah, <laughs> because it, it it's just you know, and and other than having the evidence of of wow, here I am, here's what I'm doing. Mm. Uh, it, it's just amazing, and I just and, and but I I was able to just. And I didn't even really identify it at the time, but I've just let them go of this is going to work out. I, I, all I had was, I don't know how, but it's going to work out. I kept, mm -hmm. I, I felt that it, there was, there was truly that feeling that I just. Whoops. We just lost Joel. I think he probably, oh, here he comes. Probably got a phone call. Is oh. that a phone call? I don't think so. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, he just went away. Came back. Okay. It was a blip. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I went, my mom and dad were alive at the time when I was down there and, and I had to tell my mom to quit. You know, she was worried to death. You know, she was like, oh my goodness, son, what are you going to do? 
uh, you lost your job. Can you beg him to get the job? I said, Mom, stop, please. <laughs> this, this isn't helping. Uh, I, I said, it's going to work out. She goes, but you don't even have a plan. I go, I know. It's, it's going to work out. She, it drove her crazy. I didn't have a plan. And, uh, <laughs> I, and, I remember a few yeah. years back, a movie came out called the, the, the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. And there was a line from that movie that I've quoted a few times that I really liked. But the first time I heard it, I hated it. I really, it just rubbed me the wrong way the first time I heard it. I had to hear it a few times before I finally started to see it differently. Uh, because the first few times I heard it, I, I heard it like it was a threat to myself, which it was not. But the line says, everything is going to be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, it's not yet the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a lot of people hear that when they're middle of something and they feel they're being dismissed. They feel it's dismissive. That, yeah, saying. that's the way I felt. Yeah. yeah. And, exactly. But when you know that's absolute, there is no growth without something to catalyze, the catalyst to make you grow. Mm -hmm. So if, if everybody got their job they loved when they got out of high school or college and they never left uh, and they just worked 30 years in the place, move on, then, yeah, I mean, that, there's nothing wrong with that if that happens for you. But it's, it's the people that get fired or, you know, sometimes unceremoniously or sometimes unfairly and end up doing great things. It's mm. just, you know, it, 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 everybody I know that has mega wealth and I know a lot of very, very wealthy people, mm -hmm. they did it in response to something. They went and oh, okay. most, most of them were fired or unfairly treated. They went out and created something. And, you know, sometimes to survive, I, uh, they, they just had to do something that turned into a multi, multi million dollar project or something. They never intended. They just tried to get some, a job or something. And so, so is it fair to say that since these events that they experienced were, were, we're assuming that they were really negative events, and I'm sure you could tell stories that would reinforce that. Is it possible then that what enabled people in those situations to let go was that their situations were so horrific that letting go was an easy option? Absolutely. I believe that. It, it It's... One of the things that in a similar vein, one of the things that I considered when I, when I got out of jail and I had nothing left, nowhere to go other than this transitional living home uh, that I was living at in Florida, I had nowhere to go except there. And nobody with my mom and dad were not speaking to me, rightfully so, had nobody. And I had, it, it was surprisingly simple at that point. Hmm only because I had no choices. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to, you know, I had the only job I could get my hands on was waiting tables. That was simple. Mm -hmm. You know, you take the only job that's offered, you go do yeah. that. And mm -hmm. I did that. And from that, I ended up helping out at the transitional living home, eventually got my gambling certification to help treat gamblers. I, and I walked that path and that was not a path I would have chosen, but it, it worked out perfectly and I didn't even realize all that was unfolding in a way that was going to be like it is today. Yeah. How could you know that? There's no way. And it seemed like there was no path forward. It turned out there was the, the perfect path forward. And in fact, as you're saying, if I, if, if we even went through all the details of having this long story, too long story to tell now, how I got here and why would it, it, it cannot be true. It, <laughs> it just, it, it's just, you, it's not believable. It really isn't. It defies logic, defies yeah. reason. Yeah, uh, it, it, the whole thing when you when you put on out on paper, you would say, "Well, this is probably what happened to you because you were, you did put it on paper. You put yeah. it in your book, absolutely." And and when you probably, my, I'm guessing, but I'm guessing that when you wrote this, when you wrote that particular section, you read it back to yourself and you said, "No one's going to believe that." Well, I, 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 tell, I, I had a, I've had a couple of people say, "Did all of that stuff really happen?" <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I go, "It did." I, I I'm not, you know, it, it's just so. It's so ridiculous. And, and you know, it, it's like, I always say it was like it was perfectly orchestrated to end up here, despite my best efforts. I was trying to do anything. Despite but, your best efforts, yeah. yeah uh, and and it, it unfolded. And I really believe that for whatever reason, my realization that everything's going to work out and, and letting go with these, anything that doesn't serve you, being able to let go of that concept, you know, it's, it's, and, and the, the, one of the last addictive things I got rid of, I used to use, uh, uh, like smokeless tobacco, nicotine, like those little mm. nicotine things in your mm. mouth. And, uh, that was so hard to quit. And, no, oh, really? Okay. And, and, but I, I, I quit. What I realized is, and this has been, I've been, haven't done this for, for 20 years, but one of the, the way I was able to quit 
I was able to, I, I changed, instead of fighting the cravings, I said, I'm letting, what, this is not serving me in any manner. It's not serving me. And I, so I want to let go. That was a period of my life. I, 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 I use the phrase, I let go of anything that doesn't serve me. Mm -hmm. And so I just approached it with, it seems the same thing, but I, the, the craving, it was different. Cause when I, the time that I tried to quit before I was fighting the cravings, which is hard to do, but I, I, I changed my perspective and I'm like, I'm not going to, this doesn't serve me. I'm not going to give any attention to what doesn't serve me. So this phrase, this doesn't serve me <laughs> in and of itself, it kind of served you. The phrase did. Absolutely. I say, phrase, that because, yeah. I, I say that because the earlier examples were about how you had no choice. Right. Literally everything was outside of your control. There were, there was one pl way to go. It was the only way to go. So yes. you just went there because I mean, Hobson's choice. There's nothing else yep. I can really do. Absolutely. At but at some point you start getting true choices. Yes. And and it was your your method for dealing with the true choices was what, what you just outlined. Yes. Which was does this serve me? You asked yourself a question because you'd already been through a series of events where you you basically had no choice. Right. And now that you finally had a choice, you didn't really want to go back to that same place you were in before where you had no choice. You you right. like choice. I mean, choice, everybody choice. likes to have choice. Yeah, choice is always best, obviously. Uh, it you know, but I do feel having no choice at the time I had no choice was a great gift mm -hmm. because again, I had no choice. I, 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 I well, well, it was gui the, 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 no choice was guiding you where you needed to go and you didn't absolutely. know. It. Yes. And that, that is, you know, there, that period of my life, any choice I've made was always the wrong choice. So I promise <laughs> I you, it was know. always the wrong choice. Yeah. So the fact that the, like the universe said, okay, this idiot, so <laughs> we're, we're going to just make it no choices. Mm -hmm. You only got the choice. So yeah. you keep, we have offered multiple ways out of this and you have refused everyone. <laughs> so we're going to give you one choice. So can he get this right? <laughs> I think, I think my guardian angels go just looking around the other angels going, wow, I ended up with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm reminded of a of a skit, and I don't remember what the skit was, but it was from a a television series or something or a movie where uh, oh I remember what it was from. It was from the West Wing television series. That's right, where um, the former wife of one of the staffers is also a congresswoman, and one of the reasons that she divorced him is because he did these really idiotic things, and he does this one idiotic thing in front of a large group of people while she's there. She says, "Yep." That's my man. Everybody stay away from me. <laughs> there he is. I found him first. Hands off. Yeah, yeah hands off. Yeah, it, it's, it's really proud of that. So, uh, but, but you know, under, understanding the value of why we forgive or why we let go or why we move it is there is really, it, to me, maybe it's not to you or other people, but it's really important to understand there's nothing you can do better for yourself than to forgive or let go of situations. Mm. And uh, not because you're philanthropic and kind, but because- Well, it can be for that if that's, if that's what works if for you. If you want to do that, that's, I have no problem with that being a side effect. But one of the main things to look at is you cannot move forward if you're stuck on the old stuff. If you're, yeah. uh, by, by using even a more visual metaphor here you know if i'm holding on to in my hands holding on to the past so with my anger or my frustration i can't fully be present now and and be able to and be able to move on because i'm i'm hung to the past i'm stuck to the past and as you know you've heard me say it a million times you say it in various ways too the only relevant moment we have in life is right now mm -hmm. and so how you're feeling right now is part of this process. And if, you, if you're if you stuck on all this other stuff, it, it, it just makes it so much harder to for the law of attraction to respond in the way you want to respond. It's going to respond, but it won't make a lot of sense because it's it, it, you're, you're giving mixed signals. Yeah, well, you're, you're leading into my way of trying yes. to, to yes. navigate it. Because my way yes. to navigate it, the thing that finally worked for me, and, and I think this is really part of, of anyone's journey of, of trying to figure out how to let go of stuff. You have to find the one that works for you. Yes. And, and it's going to be a little bit different for everybody. For me, the thing that makes all the difference is to simply ask myself, how do I feel about it? Yes. If it doesn't feel good, that's my clue. Yes. And if it does feel good, that's my clue. Yeah. And, that and that's good. it. That's the whole, I mean, if I try to make it any more complex, I guarantee I'm going to make the wrong choice. But if I limit yes. myself to that choice, I don't get it wrong. I always know how I feel about something. 
Yeah, and if you if you have that awareness to know how you feel, that is a great. Again, you're it's a, it's a version of the it's a a type of the emotional guidance scale practice. Yeah. Of how you feel about it, just yeah. just use your emotions to gauge how you feel about situations and. And it was you know, hard the first time. I mean, the, I remember the first time I tried to do it, all my doubts were were flying. Everyone was saying, "Well, this is a bunch of bullshit. What are you doing? This isn't going to do any good. You know, right. it's not going to do any good." All that kind of stuff was going through my head. Somehow, I convinced myself to do it anyway, and nothing happened. Yes. And and the amazing part is, I got myself to do it again. Yeah. That's the part that really was amazing because in yeah. in in the face of no response, no reaction, no result, I was willing to try it again, and even again and again after that. And I don't even know where it kicked in, but it's somewhere. Somewhere in that process of steps two, three, four, five, you know, different trials of doing it, I started to actually believe it was true. I started to actually believe that if I just go with what feels good, I get the better result. If I go with what doesn't feel good, I get the worse result. Absolutely. And that, that's important. To, the, 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 that inner voice, that what feels good, that, mm -hmm. that's your inner voice and in, in going that direction. I had, I, I, I've told this story in the show. It's been, a, I mean, may have been, years ago i know it was years ago because it happened years ago this mm -hmm. this young lady sends me a text and i get it like on a saturday night mm. she's like yeah she's only like 20 at the time so she was like mm -hmm. very dramatic you know oh my god can you call me worst possible thing happened today i think i remember this yeah yeah, and, yeah. so i text her back and I said oh my god how long do you have to live <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love like, that. What a great like, response. And she's like, what? I go, <laughs> well, the worst possible thing is you've been diagnosed with some terrible disease, you're going to die. And she's like, well, it's not that bad. And I go, oh, okay. So <laughs> I said, just give me a call. It's probably, it turned out to be a boyfriend problem. So, but mm. <laughs> but the, the in her mind, her verbiage and body language responding is the worst possible thing that could have happened. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I think her boyfriend cheated with her best friend or something, mm. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, obviously she's not my client anymore. She, many years, she's uh, probably thirty something at this point. Uh, last I saw her, looking fantastic. She laughs about that still. She goes. Oh my God, I can't believe that. I'm still embarrassed that you know that story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said, it's, it's so stupid. But I said, no, at the time it was important. But, it but was. We, we do have a tendency to, you know, awfulize or make things more. And when you can just realize, deep breath, not, not get so stuck in that. Because it, if you always remember how you feel, your emotions and what you're, the, that's it, all we're taught. Law of attraction depends on that. And, and you, you, that's the indicator of where we're at. Go, and and go that's why it works for me, by the way, because not just that yes. law of attraction works, but also I could count on it. Yes. I, I knew yes. for sure that no matter what I said to anybody else or to myself, I knew whether the feeling was my real feeling or not. Yes. I, it was never in doubt. It was never a question. It was never a vagueness. It was always very clear. I, I may not like voicing what the feeling was. Right. I may not like giving it a label, but I always knew what it was. I could always tell yeah, in, in, without any more than a split second. Like, yep, okay, I'm feeling that right now. Yes, absolutely. And it wasn't that's hard good. to figure out anything after that. So when you have that level of clarity, because that's what that is, that's clarity. Yeah. When and you have that level of clarity, then things get easier. It's easier well, to let go when you have some clarity because, well, you have some clarity. Well, it, you, you get to a place like I, I think we're conditioned. I can be conditioned sometimes to, you know, a reaction for a moment you know the reactions can be primal the reactions mm -hmm. sometimes bypass my my toolkit you know and yeah, yeah. and and you you it's that instant like woo like i can wake up in the middle of the night and 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 for a moment be like okay you know it's a bad dream or something weird and you know mm -hmm. but being able to the key is being able to count on it, like you said being able to pull yourself back and 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 there's there's nothing more important than on the most basic level to you work on how you feel. You be happy of loving life and loving where you're at. And when you, when you do that, it just, it, it alleviates and not, and not worried about what the world thinks of you, you know, or we're not worried about you know, anybody that, that has ever done anything great. Uh, they're always criticized. It's just, 
no, no matter which side, you know, the, uh, there's never been a president that one side just didn't think they're the worst person on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's just, it, you know, the, the, have you, did you ever watch the uh, Oliver Stone JFK? Yeah. Show? Okay. Yep. So. Yep. Just blipped out again. This is uh, technology day. Had the same thing with the other episode. There we go. There we go. Just, just the blip. Um, so the, the other day I watched it again, you, you know, just, current events maybe said, oh, let me watch that again. And um, one of the things I didn't realize is there were a lot of people that really hated JFK. Oh, yeah. A lot of people, a yeah. lot of people for different reasons. And because he went, you know, he, he was killed when he was killed. And I've always never thought of him like, oh, my God, he was such a great president. Everybody loved him. It wasn't the case. No. But it, it, it just at the time that the image of all that, the, the way they portray over the years, they've, he's sort of been betrayed as just this really great president that stood up these things. And and you're, you're like, wow, the, the fact that the real time he wasn't well loved and he was, in fact, really hated by the industrial war machine. And, you know, a lot of the normal, you know, he didn't want to be in Vietnam. And everybody else wanted to be, you know, it's crazy. Uh, that's well, people so forget that. I mean, they, they talk about the, the close elections of the 2000s. That election, the 1960 election between Kennedy and Nixon, was razor thin. I mean, 100,000 100, votes. Yeah, it could have easily gone the other way, but it, it didn't. In the entire 100,000 votes in the nation. In the nation, yeah. Yeah, not, not in one state. 100,000 votes. Yeah. Was, that's how, the, uh, just in popular vote, that's how bad it was. Yeah, it was that that much divided. So it was literally 50 50. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, you talk to 10 people, chances are five of them hated Kennedy. It was that. Yeah. Straight. But, but again, you never, never heard that narrative. So it was, yeah. it was just, it was like, oh my God, they, I didn't know he was that unpopular, you know? Yeah. And it was like 50% of the people literally hated the guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but, mm -hmm. it, but it's, you know, my perspective of me has always been a real positive report, you know? And, uh, and, but, but it, what our perspective in life is really dictates our reality. So you, you assuming we, we, most of us are brought up and I've said this in a lot of shows, believing your reality is dictated to you. Mm -hmm. When, and it will be as long as you believe that when you really realize your perspective creates your reality and you're in charge of your perspective, you have the keys to the kingdom. You can do whatever you want to do. And I did believe that for the longest time. Yes. That was the best thing in the world. Talk about letting go. When yes. I finally let go of that one, that was one of the greatest victories of my life, letting go of that. I agree with that. That that was, for me, that, I don't know why that statement in the middle of my growth and everything, when I really understood and, and really believed for the first time, your reality is created by your perspective. Mm. And your perspective is in your, your you're the only one in control of that. So by default, you're in control of your reality. And, and I, uh, uh, I think it was Joe Depenza talks about being a reality, a reality creator. Uh, that might be him. I was one of my guys. But, uh, re, you know, create, create your own reality. You, I remember you, very, very vividly. I remember uh, being in uh, a space where I felt totally powerless where I didn't believe that I had any control over my reality. And I remember, it, uh, no, I'm, I'm still married at the time, my ex-wife Louise uh, was suggesting to me that if I wanted to try to choose differently, just to, to prove to myself that I could do it, that uh, she knew I took walks every day and still do. And she said, when you, when you take your walk, I want you to find one thing that uh, is lovely in nature and just go in and study it. Just study it for a moment and then ask yourself if by studying it, you're feeling any, any different. Just, just try that as an experiment. So I did. Yeah. And when I came back, I reported that, yeah, I, I did kind of feel different. And she said, well, that's what it is to change how you feel about something. Yeah. And that was a breakthrough. That was a mental breakthrough. Like I, up until that point, I literally did not think that was possible. Yes. Yes. But once I found out that it really was possible, well, first of all, I felt like I wasted the first 50 years of my life. But secondly, once I had figured out that it was possible, it was like, well, how can I learn to do this more? <laughs> well, the, the, and, and you have. And, and that was great advice by Louise because it was yeah. such a, uh, you know, let, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at what's out there. Let's let whatever can change your perspective when you, 
uh, you know, being able to find your power within something. And, and, you know, I, I just, I, I, I get, fa I'll, I'll look at this re really philosophically of, of the, uh, you know, the plants breathe out what we breathe in and we mm -hmm. breathe out what the plants breathe in. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, that's very cool. Uh, you know, yeah, it is. the, the, you know, the, the things, you know, I won't even mention quantum theory because you know how that goes. Yeah, I think you just did. Sorry. Yeah. Too yeah, late. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when, when, you know, if, if I need something to, you know, I, I can get fascinated by just the, 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 the alignment of the planets, how everything keeps in orbit perfectly. I mean, there's so many things in play that are working perfectly. They're just working perfectly. So when things feel out of control, I'm going, in the big scheme of things, things are so synchronistic and perfect. Uh, this little thing, why am I worried about this? When the 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 moon moves the tides, which moves the oceans, which does this, blah, 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 and all this, all this perfect timing and the way it's set up. And if anything were out of whack just a little, none of it would be here. I, I remember going through David Strickle's Taya boot camp. And one of the, th of the things that he has you do in that boot camp is you do a, a visualization, a guided visualization, where you literally, in your in your mind's eye, you you leave the planet Earth and you go out into outer space and you go out so far that the planet Earth becomes this little tiny speck of dust. Yes. And from that perspective, you realize that's how big my problems are because I'm a little speck on that speck of dust. Yeah, you're just yeah yeah. I mean. Think of our poor friend Pluto. I mean, that used yeah. to be a planet. <laughs> poor I mean, we, Pluto. I mean, Pluto's Pluto, been I mean, a rough time, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, Pluto, when I was a child, was a planet. I it mean, was it a was full blown planet. A full blown planet. And now they don't even, they, they, they named it a dwarf planet. It hasn't even made it around the sun an entire time since that happened. It's very mm. sad. Mm. You, know, it's like, you know, poor Pluto's out there in the planet. It, again, Pluto was a planet until we said it wasn't a planet. So, I'm still team Pluto. I don't know about you, but I'm still. I'm I, very, I, I think we should resurrect Pluto. I really I, do. We yeah. should. I think we, we can focus on that. Pluto for planethood. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Let's just, <laughs> that should be a, that if one of the, if one of our presidential people took that as a platform. Yeah. I'll probably, for that. Sure. I'll probably take that up with them, you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Cause it's as important as everything else we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> probably more so than many things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the only Difficult part about this topic is letting go of it, which of course yeah. is hard because that's what the topic is. So uh, letting go of the letting go show. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So we'll we'll save it for another time. But thank you very much, Joel. As usual, this has been so much fun. I really I love it. it. Thank you. Well, great topic today. Thank you. And thank you also to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>